For the next eight and a half hours and 22 and a half miles, these gentlemen will be fighting all the harshness that ocean water swimming has to offer. We'll bring you all the stories, including Taranas Shinoi, the handicapped person who fought those handicaps to become a hero of a nation, and Paul Asmuth, the seven-time great champion who's come back for one more blaze of glory. John Forkin will have all the stories from the shore, and myself, Jim Schaefer, and Chris Bradley will bring you all the stories from the water as the race progresses. We'll bring you all the excitement of the 1989 World Championship of Marathon Swimming around Epsican Island. The start is at Fairleys Marina. We'll be back with that great start right after these messages. Seconds there, you see Rob Schmidt getting out to it looks like a little early lead. You can see the boats with all their flags representing their countries of the swimmers on the, all the lifeguard boats. And there's the beautiful Trump Princess. Wow, what a sight! A little speedboat on there itself. Let's take a look at the map of the course. And there it is. The map is. Uh, Around Absecon Island, the yellow line is the course, the yellow line and it's 20. Is, uh, around Absecon Island, the yellow line is the course, the yellow line and it's 22 and a half miles as we've already stated. It begins in Far Farley's Marina and comes out into the ocean as it goes through the channel. Sometimes that's tough, but today the current's going out so that's not going to be as tough as, as it usually is. Then they have to go around the critical Longport jetty. If the current is going out like they expect, the leader could pick up about 100 yards at that point. Then it's through the back bays, which should be the easier swimming of it, and where most of the sp spectators are located. Then it's back into Atlantic City for the tough channel swimming and back bay swimming where the currents are very treacherous. And as you come around to Harris Marina, that's where the tough currents are, the worst currents of the race, so they got to be careful of that. Hi, I'm Jim Schaefer, and I'm here. We'll be giving live reports with Chris Bradley, yesterday's uh, age group winner in the Avent Marport uh, Amateur Swim, and we're out in front, and we'll be giving reports all day from the water. And as you can see in the early lead, we have Richard Schmidt so far, and we'll be giving reports. And what do you think so far? The water's warm, Chris? Conditions are perfect for today. We have a little overcast, which is nice. Keep that sun off everybody. It'll be even a little easier on us today. It's going to be a nice long day. Could be a record-breaking day. Got a lot of things uh, working for the swimmers today. Tide and the weather. The seas are low and uh, should be in for an exciting day. We're expecting a very, very fast time today and we'll be back with more reports later. But now let's take a look at an interview that my partner Chris Bradley had with our early leaders Rob Schmidt and James K. Partner Chris Bradley had with our early leaders Rob Schmidt and James Kegley. 
Good morning, Chris Bradley here in Atlantic City. Two of today's Around the Island swimmers, James Kegley and Rob Schmidt. Two of today's uh, champions. Uh, we're here, it's now currently 8.07. We have about another 25 minutes before the race time. Guys, a few words uh, before we get in the water this morning. Hey, it's hopefully it's gonna be a nice day. Um, not your first time doing this, is it, James? No, it's about my 10th. <laughs> Rob? Uh, uh, this is my third year, and I've never uh, done this one before. I started last year, but uh, the conditions were just too bad. So. Yeah, a little little better this year. Oh, I, yeah, I don't have too much body fat, so I can't hang out in 52-degree water for too long. <laughs> Any rivalry between you two guys? I know you guys are pals. You uh, stay in here in Atlantic City together. Uh, where do you think you'll be? Are you going to swim together or anything like that? Uh, we're, we're friends, but once we get in the water, we're competitors. Deadly enemies? Uh, uh, swimming yeah. with knives on your ankles. <laughs> My brother did this um, for a number of years, and he and James are pretty good friends. And uh, so I kind of, I'm good friends with James, but like he says in the water, you know, it's a completely different thing. You got to do your, right. do your swim and concentrate. Well, we'll be on a stake boat throughout the day. We'll be keeping a close eye on you too, because you are the local favorites. We wish you the best of luck, and we'll uh, update with you a little later. As you can see, as we uh, get closer to the Atlantic Ocean and out of the channel, uh, we have Schmidt, then uh, Kegley and Azimuth right behind three of the three of the all perennial leaders around here and uh, what do you think Chris is this a good start for Azimuth to get that title back uh, yeah it is uh, the leaders are taking formation right now and it's just who we thought it was going to be I'm glad to see James Kegley he's taking the inside lane up Right now, and it's just who we thought it was going to be. I'm glad to see James Kegley. He's taking the inside lane up there. Uh, they're bucking the current a little bit. He's staying, staying inside, which is a smart move. Uh, this is going to be draining for him a little bit. Asmuth knows what he's doing. He's staying right behind his boat, kind of uh, getting a... Uh, uh, a little help staying right behind the boat as far as the current goes. It looks like this will be our leaders right from the start here. What about uh, you talk to James Kegley. He's been working on the sprints, not the long races. Is he just going to try and get out, try and get an early lead and stay with it as long as he can? That's exactly what he's going to try to do. He came in here today with loose, feeling free, not a whole lot of pressure on him. And uh, for him to be up like this right now is a good sign. He's going to be right up in the front all day long, along with our man Schmidt. He's pumped up for this race also. How about Diego? We haven't seen him yet. Well, we have a long, long race to go. I'm looking back. I see him. He's currently in fifth place right now. Uh, time will tell. It's very early. John Forkin had a chance to talk with seven-time champion Paul Asmuth before the race. Let's take a look at that interview right now. Hello, I'm here with Paul Osmuth, uh, seven-time champion of the Rounding Island Swim. Uh, Paul, do you have any particular strategy today that you're going to use during the race? Well, in any, any long swim like this, you have to swim really relaxed. So for me, I'm sure I'll swim really relaxed like the first couple hours to see how I feel and figure out whether I can pick up the pace from there or not. Who do you think will be your chief uh, rival today as uh, far as uh, winning? Uh, there's four or five guys, but I'd say the top guys are uh, Diego Degano from Argentina and Rob Schmidt from the U.S. and um, David Oliva from the U.S. and myself, James Kegley from the U.S. Um, David Oliva from the U.S. and myself, James Kegley from the U.S. and uh, I'd say those are the be top top five six guys. What would you consider the most difficult point on the course? Uh, would it be the Longport Point or the Back Bay area or the ocean? Well, today the ocean seems fairly calm. So I and we'll have the current going with us and uh, going out the Absecon Inlet and also coming in Longport. So I think the most difficult difficult part is going to be right at the finish. We'll have the uh, current running against us, so that'll be uh, fairly, uh, you know, that's one of the most tired and it's going to be the hardest part of the race. After last year's controversial end, did you have any uh, certain feelings on this year's race or uh, anything in particular? It doesn't affect this year's race too much. You know, I just like to get in and swim well and feel good. Okay, Paul. Well, good luck today, and we hope to see the victory at the end. Thanks. 
Schmidt at the edge of the channel, Chris Asmith and Kegley still neck and neck. There's a lot of room between swimmers with Diego in fourth place. Uh, turning the tee jetty here, Schmidt is looking strong. Uh, he's opening up his lead just a little bit. Kegley's taking the inside lane. He knows these waters maybe just a little bit better than everybody else since this is his tenth time doing it. But again, Asmith and Diego are st looking real strong. Still very early in the race as we enter the ocean. It's looking good. Now the waters seem to they get a little calmer here. This is the choppiest part of the, of, uh, of the race and now the waters get calmer. Who does that favor? Well, definitely the pool swimmer, but since all these guys work out in the pool, it's going to favor pretty much everybody. Calmer water is just nicer water to race in. Uh, right, as we round the tee jetty, it's very choppy right in here. Nicer water to race in. Uh, right, as we round the tee jetty, it's very choppy right in here, but as we enter upon, let's see, New Hampshire Avenue here, it's starting to calm down a little bit. I see trainer Ed Porter over there with uh, Richard Schmidt. He's looking like he's doing a good job for him, and Schmidt is looking strong. He's opening his lead just a little bit. Now, Plitt, last year's champion, does not like the, he likes the colder water, and he's nowhere in sight right now. Can he make a big comeback if he falls far behind? Uh, I'd have to say no chance for Plitt today. He's got a lot of extra body fat that kept him in there last year when the water was 52 degrees, but uh, his chances today are very slim. It's going to be a lean man's race today. As you can see, Kegley on the inside, he's looking great, and Schmidt on the outside, also looking very strong, and those two guys have no body fat. Okay, we'll be back with another report as we move on in the World Championship of Marathon Swimming. That's uh, Matt Armstrong and Chuck Reel who are missing their swimmer, Michael Voke, but they're going to they're gonna row anyway. One of the new interesting stories going on today. No swimmer, but the boat's going to go on. Before the race, I had a chance to talk with P Claudio Plitt, and we asked him about last year's shortened race. We're here with last year's defending champion Claudio Plitton swimming in his 10th year and today it seems like ideal conditions for you Claudio. The weather's uh, much better than it was last year. Should have a good race today. Well, uh, the weather is perfect this year. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to have a good, a good day. I hope uh, everybody the same luck. Uh, I'm going to enjoy the, the race again. Now last year you won the race but it was called... Uh, enjoy the, the race again. Now last year you won the race but it was called uh, short. Is that uh, incentive for you this year to really do well and defend your championship along the whole race because there's really no chance of it being called off today? Well, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a motivation that we got that good weather to finish the race. Uh, knowing I'm good in cold water, that was the, the advantage last year to, to win the race when the race was good. Uh, I think uh, I got a good chance also to finish well in this year and uh, I'm going to work hard for that. Do you have any specific strategies for it? Are you going to try and get out early or stay in front or stay by the leaders or, or, or any strategy at all? Well, I have to see how I feel. Uh, I'm going to try to, to go with uh, all the, the leaders the most as I can. Thank you. Well, we wish you the best of luck, Claudio, and good luck. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm here out on the end of Ocean 1, and the swimmers have been in the water for approximately an hour. Uh, and, uh, it looks like Diego Degano has broken out to an early lead with Paul Osmith. Uh, it looks like he's drafting off of him here. Uh, Degano has defeated Osmith in his three pre previous meetings this year, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they make out as they come around Longport Point. Uh, the Argentinians are also chasing very close. Uh, why don't we switch to our water cam out there with Jim Schaefer and see how they're making out there. We're at the, so you can see the beautiful Trump Plaza in the background and Chris, uh, you seem to think that uh, Jim Kegley is going out really hard and even so, he got that first bonus, but even so, it looks like Dave Oliva has just pulled ahead of him. Yeah, it's still early. Uh, they're both throwing a lot of strokes. We counted it to be a, right about 80 strokes per minute. Uh, they're both throwing a lot of strokes. We counted it to be a, right about 80 strokes per minute. Uh, so that's a lot of strokes this early in the race, but they both look fresh. Neither of them have stopped for anything yet. We've noticed several of the other crews have stopped, giving out drinks, whatever they're uh, giving their swimmers today. These guys are both looking strong. They're definitely the pace setters. 
Uh, we're getting into the race at this point. They look to be pulling out a little bit on the other riders because we saw that uh, Plitt and uh, Azmuth, uh, Dagano, they're all about 72 strokes per minute, and uh, they've taken breaks so far. You know, they're not worried about this early lead, especially from Kegley because he's a shorter swimmer. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think a lot of the, especially uh, Plitt and Azmuth, who have been here so many times, they know these front runners. Uh, there's, they know that there's still a lot of swimming left to go. They're not worried yet, but it's good to see the performance of these guys. 80 strokes, you know, we already have a few miles behind us. That is fantastic swimming. You see Dave Oliva right behind us. Uh, you, you seem to think that their strokes are, are very good. You know, they're strong. There's no, uh, what would you look for in a stroke that would be kind of deficient, you know, to tell them that somebody's tiring? Uh, well, while they're tiring, they're going to keep their head low in the water, not talking to their crew as much. These guys are still popping up out of the water. As you can see Dave right now looking. He's listening. He's getting his instructions. He still looks really fresh. He's throwing a lot of strokes. Uh, somebody who's tired, he's just going to be lagging. He's not going to want to communicate at all with his crew. James Kegley, as you can see uh, on the on the horizon there, has taken, it looks like from our angle, he has taken the lead back again, and uh, some of the other boats uh, we can see right back there, you, you can see right back there is Richard Smith, and you have also, uh, on, there's that Longport boat again with Richard Schmidt, and you have also, uh, on, there's that Longport boat again with no swimmer. Oh, with no Matt, swimmer, but they look like they're having a they're, good time. They're in fourth place right now. Yeah. Another Argentinian crew back there with the Argentinian flag. Uh, I believe the Van Dyne is for Schmidt. Now, the Van Dyne boat is uh, Asma. Schmidt is Asma. to the right of the Van Dyne boat. The Atlantic City boat with and Plitt is, is in fifth place. So the places have not changed really at all. And uh, with the exception of Dave Oliva, who came up about uh, the Steel Pier, um, we haven't had a change in place, except that these leaders seem to be growing a little bit. And uh, a surprise so far is Diego Dagano is, is, seems to be falling off the pace instead of gaining on it. Right. We don't see him in the field yet. Uh, hopefully, we'll like to see him come up a little bit. I know we tried to speak with him earlier. He's very intense on this swim and we'd like to see him come up and do some stuff but right now we're happy with who's leading right now and that is our man James Kegley. James is a, is a great guy and he is also, Chris, as you have mentioned, a crowd favorite. Everybody likes him. He's, he's smiling. He's waving to the crowd and he's going to try and get the bonus points here. Seems to be his what his trainer feels is, is the strategy. Uh, a good strategy for James because although he does enjoy the swim, he enjoys is the money. He definitely uh, would take a few bonus points, a few extra dollars. I mean, that's certainly the incentive for the majority of these swimmers here today. And uh, yeah, that would please the crowd very much to see him get those awards. So you can see some of our other fans out here and are fit and uh, enjoying the race from this angle, which is the best angle. Our next bonus points will be in Ventnor. Uh, and we're going to check in right now with Johnny Forkin <laughs> and see Ventner, uh, and we're going to check in right now with Johnny Forkin and see what kind of angle he's got as he's roaming Atlantic City right now trying to find out what the fans are looking forward Our to. Our roving reporter, Johnny. Good luck, John. Okay, and Dwayne, and we'll go to them right now. How you doing, John? Hi, I'm back here with Atlantic City Beach Patrol Chief uh, Robert Levy. Uh, Chief, uh, how are the conditions today uh, for today's race? Well, uh, I think it's excellent. Uh, the ocean conditions the, uh, has a nice light swell, uh, not too much of a chop. Uh, you have a nice overcast, so it's good for the boat crews. Uh, having rowed around this thing a number of times, it gets very hot uh, with that sun beating on you all day, so I know that they're happy about the overcast uh, stuff, and we don't have any jellyfish, and it uh, looks like it's going to be an excellent race, and right now it's very uh, competitive for those top spots. They're all really tight. The Atlantic City Beach Patrol has been very supportive of this year's race. Uh, how do you think next year will turn out? I mean, it's really evolving into quite an event. Yes, well, uh, we kind of are in charge of uh, getting all the boats together and assigning the crews uh, to row those boats. And we get a lot of support from all of the beach patrols in the South Jersey area, from uh, Cape May County, Atlantic County. And we all also have a few from uh, up in the northern uh, part of the state. Uh, it's very... Uh, uh, 
important that they do lend their uh, support because without them we wouldn't be able to put that many boats out there and as uh, this year uh, you know there's a number uh, uh, increase uh, with boats and we still have to provide all the uh, life-saving and uh, protection along the shore so we can't really take uh, you know our boats off of the beach we have to be very careful about that and uh, uh, with uh, Chief Brown uh, handling it very careful about that and uh, uh, with uh, Chief Brown uh, handling it he does an outstanding job and uh, he puts in a lot of uh, overtime that's uh, not compensated for. The water quality has been very good this year uh, what, what would you attribute that to? Uh, well, I think it's uh, an awareness. Uh, I think everybody's becoming more aware, uh, and at least in Atlantic City, our health department's done an outstanding job of uh, trying to uh, find any type of uh, violators and stopping it right away. And I think uh, we've got our act uh, pretty much together here in Atlantic City as far as our water quality goes. We're always going to have that problem after some big uh, rainstorms mm -hmm. uh, with some of the, uh, the, the, the storm water that comes uh, out of the uh, storm drains but that's just a very short temporary problem if any at all yeah any predictions for the South Jersey's tomorrow night are we gonna have the Atlantic City uh, Beach Patrol victory or uh, well I, I always like to think that uh, we haven't been real successful this year in our uh, racing program uh, but we hope to uh, correct that uh, with the upcoming season and I don't want to write this one off uh, I think that uh, our doubles crew uh, uh, did real well uh, down in the uh, Avalons when we were down there and uh, our singles uh, man did uh, much better and I think uh, our swimmer Mike Toy is, uh, is really uh, tapered down nice and uh, I think he'll surprise a lot of people tomorrow. Well the state relay champions uh, for the New Jersey State and uh, we also have the Gowdy defending Gowdy champions too so well good luck tomorrow night Chief oh, thank you. and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you John. Okay see you on the beach. <laughs>interesting and touching stories of this race is not somebody who's going who's in a lead or it looks like going to challenge for the lead but someone who's a hero in his country and that's Tara Nas Shinoy, uh Chris and from Bombay India just a tremendous touching story of an athlete how this guy's doing it is truly incredible he has no hearing I understand he's also uh, 
uh, dumb and it only has vision in one eye and that's even partial. When this race started out, it was just to see if people could do it. It was never uh, actually went out to, for people to win it and race it like that. It was just a thing to do, which is more along the lines of what this gentleman is now doing. Here he's passing the, the Golden Nugget, now I guess Bally's, Albany Avenue. He's still looking strong. Uh, fantastic showing by this gentleman. He is a hero in his own country, and uh, I think dumb may be the wrong word for him. He cannot speak, but he is definitely not dumb, and he fought through his handicaps to be just the same, and he's a leader in his country, and, and they just love him there, and it's just one of the many stories here at uh, the World Championship Marathon Swim and Around the Island Swim in Atlantic City, and we wish him the best for this race and in the future. Whether he challenges or not, he will always be a winner. In a little over two hours, the swimmers have gone from the channel, through the inlet, around, past Atlantic City. As you can see, we saw John Reach Forkins report from the Ocean One Mall. We've gone through Ventnor. John Reach Forkins report from the Ocean One Mall. We've gone through Ventnor and are currently entering Margate right now. And, as you, and we're going back to the ocean. Dave Oliva and Paul Asmus have closed ground along with Claudio Plitt. It's 11.05. We're just entering Margate. And Dave Oliva, the story of the day, he is looking strong. Oh boy, we're entering into Margate. I believe it. We just saw him take a break. We talked to his crew. His spirits are up and he's really pumped. He's still throwing 80 strokes a minute. Uh, Margate Pier is about another half quarter mile away and he's moving out. Asthma's starting to move up on Kegley. Kegley's course seems to be a little too uh, close to shore. It seems like he's going to swim a little extra distance. He has an experienced crew. Maybe they got something that we don't know. Yeah, you were talking about that. Uh, the island is a backward sea. Swimming in towards the shore not only catch the swells more, um, you said that uh, you're going to swim a higher distance. Why don't you explain that yeah, to our... swim more distance. Uh, uh, the shape of the island is just like a, a, a shoe or a, a, you know, a horseshoe, a backward sea. So the uh, straightest line between two points is a straight line. They're going close to the shore. They're going to swim a little more distance like that. And like you were saying, the swells are in higher. That's where they're breaking. Uh, these guys with the Oliva crew are doing a super job. They're keeping him outside. Uh, they're feeding him right. They're giving him encouragement. He's looking like the man today. If you can see in the distance, you can see that Dave Oliva is also, he has a pretty strong kick going, which is unusual for these distance swimmers. Absolutely. To be expending all that energy on kicking is really shows a sign that this guy is in shape. But we still have the whole bay to go, and that's been Asmuth. Really shows a sign that this guy is in shape. But we still have the whole bay to go, and that's been Asmuth's strong point in the past. So this race is certainly not over by any shot. We're only at the Margate Pier now, but it's been a great race to this point. Yeah, it's still. It looks like a five-man race. It looks like right now, as as you can see in our view in our camera, you got Dave Oliva close to us. Far, far away, close to the shore, is James Kegley. Then Asmuth. Then Bob Schmidt. Then Claudio Plitt. And the uh, and, and looking at those uh, three, four, and five, they all look to be kicking up a little bit. Their strokes are up. Still within striking distance. Absolutely, of the lead, no question about it. Uh, a lot of these fa uh, swimmers favor the back bay, so we can see several lead changes. Well, I think it's time to check in on our roving reporter. Where he is, we have no idea, but we're going to check in right now with John Forkin and see what kind of story he's cooking up now. What do you think he's got in mind, Chris? Uh, I don't know. I bet he's interviewing a few girls and their thoughts about the race today, but that's my opinion. Yeah, you're probably right. Let's go to John right now with his special report from the shores of the Atlantic City. Hello, I'm back here with Jack Garrity, race director here at the Marathon Swim. Uh, Mr. Garrity, how long have you been involved with this swim? Well, I've been involved in the swim now approximately five years, but I've been actually... Like David Alivia is in the lead here, just rounding the jetty there for the first time. You can see the currents here are real bad. He's set a brutal pace. He's been in first since uh, Venter Pier. And it looks like he's setting about a 50-stroke... 50 stroke per minute pace, very good pace. He is at least, and I want to accentuate that, at least about 100 yards in front of second place. I want to 
accentuate that at least about 100 yards in front of second place, which looks as if it could be James Kegley, also from the United States. The Argentinians are in a pack about 150 yards behind Kegley. And as, as we heard from John Forkin up on the jetty, it's Dave Oliva from the United States coming around first. And uh, w from our vantage point, he looked very strong, Chris. Oh, he looks fantastic. The planning was just right. The tide is coming in very quickly. They're looking strong. From our viewpoint here, everything looks great. Looks like they're putting a lot of distance between them and uh, second and third. Now here, with the current coming in, he should be able to, uh, most experts think he should be able to put 100 extra yards on his next competitor. I think it's a good, a good shot at that. This current is perfect. Uh, we've yet to see another boat. It seems as if he has increased his lead. Uh, and another thing that's going for him, oh, I see the second boat right now. That looks like Paul Asmuth's crew. But we still have at least 200 yards here between first and second. Now, this first place boat is passing the first checkpoint for the bonus money, uh, which is the Daniels house. So, Dave Oliva, that's got to pump him up psychologically. He's first into the back bay, also the first intercoastal checkpoint. So, he's making a lot of bonus dollars in addition to increasing his lead. But watch out for Paul Asmuth. He's been in this position before. Yeah, we, it's tough to tell. It did look like the, the tan boat was coming around, which is Paul Asmuth. And as he passes that house, you can see the party going on to your, uh, to your yeah, left. Pick this up now. Asmuth's crew is going outside that red buoy. Now, I'm not sure if that was a good move on their part. Uh, Oliva's crew said inside the buoy, uh, Oliva's going... if that was a good move on their part. Uh, Oliva's crew stood inside the buoy. Uh, Oliva's going for a quick rest stop right here. Now he had a little something to drink. He looks strong. And they stayed in close right where the current's the strongest. I think it was a wise move. But we'll see what happens. As Dave Oliva and the leaders enter the back bays, we had a chance to talk to some of their trainers about their strategies and how their swimmers were holding up. We're back here, and as you can see, that's Dave Oliva to our side in the lead as he passes in the back bays. And, and Chris, who do we have on the crew here? Uh, that's Joe Haney rowing bow and Mike Ruley in the stern. I'm not sure who uh, Dave's trainer is. Uh, maybe we'll try to get a word in with these guys and see if they have any first-hand knowledge how uh, Dave's holding up here. Hey, uh, Mike, how's your swimmer? He's looking really strong, consistent. How many, how many strokes per minute? 78. 78. He's been that way all day, hasn't he? Pretty much. I learned in 76. What's your strategy here in the back base? Stay in the channel and just bring it home. Keep going. <laughs> has, he, has he had anything to eat yet? No. Did you gotta stop for food? Near the express my friend. All right. Sounds good. Has, has anybody tried to make a move on you yet? Nobody can. Small move, but it, it, it's, you know, cat and dog. Pretty much. All right. Yeah, Here we are. This is Paul Asmuth in second place. He looks to be about 300 yards behind. We're going to try and get a word with Carl Smallwood, who is his trainer. Yeah, uh, Carl's been his trainer for a few years now. Let's see what he says. Carl, how's your swimmer doing? Good. Swimming relaxed. Let's see what he says. Carl, how's your swimmer doing? Good. Swimming relaxed. See what happens. Yeah, he wants to keep an idea of the guy in first place. Is he asking about that? Well, we know we're about two minutes behind, two and a half. He's been there before, huh? Still got a little ways to go. That's for sure. Has he stopped for food or anything like that yet? Well, he eats every half hour. Let's go. Every half hour he takes something. How about... Uh, how about this? Uh, can you hear me? How come you chose the wide angle on the channel? Down here on the inside jetty, getting the current right away. Yeah. The current really moves down the incoming tide. Looks as if the distance between him and uh, the, the first boat has uh, remained the same once they've entered the bay. No one's either gained ground or lost it. So when the, uh, with the little tricky uh, channels ahead, we're going to see what's going on. But uh, as far as strength is concerned with these If you couldn't hear what Carl said over the roar of the boats, he said that they wanted to catch, they thought the better current was to the outside, is what he said. So it's, uh, and that's exactly what uh, the crew for, um, 
Aliva said. So, so it's it's a matter of who's right and who's wrong. Yeah, now we're going to find out. That point. No question. No question. Well, they're, they seem very relaxed about their position in second place, and they're not worried at all, Chris. They've been there a lot. Carl's been there a lot. He does seem confident. And uh, that other crew ahead, you know, maybe uh, inexperience will pay off for them by just being a little nervous and whatnot. Carl seems awfully confident, though. This is going to be a close race to the finish. There's trainer Bill Brooks for the uh, team Kegley there, Bob Bristol, and uh, There's trainer Bill Brooks for the uh, team Kegley there, Bob Bristol and uh, Mr. Batzer. They're looking good. Bob, how's your swimmer? Wonderful. Wonderful. You guys look confident. About 300 yards behind the leaders. Anything to say? Let's get it over. <laughs> Bill, why'd you take that inside route along the island out there? Yeah. <laughs> you look like you were way inside everybody else. And it works. All right. How's Jim feeling? Very good. Because he's getting old like us. Get the camera on, Jim. <laughs> Give it up, Jim. Uh, over here we have uh, Mr. Schmidt. He's looking strong. Now he dropped from first. He was first uh, around the T jetty. Now he's in fourth, but he's still uh, in good good shape. Still way ahead of the rest of the pack. I can't get over this Jim Kegley, though. I, he is a character. This guy has been swimming forever, <laughs> and he's still got a grin on his face. I don't understand it at all, Chris. Without a question of a doubt, probably one of the nicest guys in the water today. Great personality. Yeah, he was making a little fun of us back there for a moment. And uh, as, when he even climbs out of the water, his spirits will still be high. He's a hell of a guy. I tell you, that's to me, that's that's just incredible that somebody could swim around an island and still have a smile on his face at this point. But we're gonna we're gonna try and swing over and get a word with Richard Schmidt's crew, and he looks to be in good shape. Although these guys look to be uh, a little, their strokes look to be a little more laboring than the other two. Yeah, that's true. You can definitely see a little bit of a difference. Uh, they've they're halfway home so far, and it's starting to take its toll. Uh, this is where the strength comes in. way home so far and it's starting to take its toll. Uh, this is where the strength comes in, the conditioning. Okay, we're going to try and swing around and we'll be back with a word with Richard Schmidt, maybe, or just his crew, right after these messages. <laughs> a few words on the new world of business. There's just so much information that I've got to be selective. I'm in marketing. I live and breathe market share. If I'm in touch, then I've got an edge. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-232-2700 for this special journal offer. 12 weeks, just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. Call 800-232-2700 now for the Wall Street Journal. Okay, here we are on, uh, with Richard Schmidt's team and Eddie Porter. How you doing? How's it? How's he holding up? Oh, he's holding up great. Kicking well. 60 a minute. Holding real steady. How's your crew holding up, Ed? My crew. Take yeah, a look a at him. Sore, but, you know. I recognize that bow man from somewhere in the past. See, I swam the first time the race the other, and he just picked it up in the back. Is that how it works? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna try and make a move on the leaders? Are we trying to make a move? Oh, I'm gonna ask you. We'll make it. What about that crew next year? You gonna try to uh, knock them out? He's that Kegley's a tough competitor. Oh, he is. He's gonna be on our heels the whole race <laughs> or, until they cut him loose from that drag line. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, some accusations here between the, the crews fighting for third place. All in good jest, though. Yes. These these guys are all friends, and <laughs> this this looks like a fun section of the. Just though, yes. these, these guys are all friends, and <laughs> this this looks like a fun section of the race right here. The more women, the better he's going to do. Oh, uh, can we put that on the air? I don't know about that. Uh, look, uh, it was a good strategy. A couple optimistic notes from these teams. Everybody seems uh, happy and spirits are high. Yeah, they look like, if, if, if it's possible, they look like they're having fun. They really do. it. For this point in the race, for them to be joking around and jovial, that's a good sign. It's been a perfect day up to this point. Let's just hope it stays this way. Let's zero in our man Kegley here. And he is still smiling. <laughs> smiling Jim Kegley. Is that a smile or a, or a frown? I can't pick that out. 
guess it's a smile. While the battle raged on between Schmidt and Kegley, we're going ahead to Dave Oliva, who's in the West Canal area, and is surprisingly holding off the charge of Paul Asmuth. Okay, we're back here with Dave Alita the, and Alita, and, and they just told him that he had about a two-minute lead, and uh, he let a, out a big ha-ha, you know? He was really psyched about that, and that charged him up. Yeah, we're in the mile stretch. He knows uh, this is where the tricky parts of the course are going to be. His crew is pumping him up like that. Good guy, Joe Haney. See, he's, occasionally he swims off course like that. They have to alert him to uh, get right behind that boat and draft. Seems as if he's going into a bit of a current. This is right about that point in the island where the uh, tide's going to work against him. Uh, it looks like uh, they're getting ready to feed uh, um, Paul Asmuth, and we're going to try and catch that, but uh, that's going to increase Dave Oliva's lead. He's looking good here. He doesn't look like he's tiring. Yeah. That's going to increase Dave Oliva's lead. He's looking good here. He doesn't look like he's tiring His that much. He said that he doesn't want to eat yet for about another couple miles. He has yet to have anything except liquids. So time will tell. Yeah, he looks strong. We could have a major, major upset here. But uh, as of right now, it looks like Dave Oliva it looks good. Paul Asmuth has yet to make that move that we've been waiting for. But it's still very tight with a lot of water to go. It's uh, anybody's race, though. One person who is starting to, two, actually two people starting to make a move. We saw Diego Delgado making a move, but also Bob Schmidt and his crew making a move. And uh, they they were at 60 strokes a minute this whole race, and now and now they're also moving on to uh, they're increasing their stroke rate, and they were picking up speed on Paul Asmuth. Yeah, Schmidt's crew really looked good. Uh, he's starting to move. They saw Asmuth on a couple of the turns. They gave him a lot of big motivation. He's pumped up. He's going to come in. He's going to be a figure into this whole scene. Real. Tennis Magazine covers everything you want to know about tennis, from instruction to equipment, pro tennis to resorts. If tennis makes you feel good, a subscription to Tennis Magazine will make you feel great. Subscribe to Tennis Magazine now, only $9.97 for 12 issues. Call 800-892-9000. We'll include two free booklets on improving your game. Tennis Magazine. Call 800-892-9000 now. Dave Oliva continued to amaze as he never let up. Asmuth made his moves through the back bays of Margate, sometimes getting within 150 yards. Getting within 150 yards. But Oliva turned up the heat. By the time they passed the Albany Avenue Bridge, over an hour later, Oliva had nearly built a three-minute lead. This trend only continued into the sixth hour of the race. Oliva had built a four-plus minute lead over Asmuth and a charging Robert Schmidt. To avoid a growing current and maintain his lead, Oliva's crew made a gutsy decision under the expressway bridge. Wow, you're not going to believe this, but uh, heavy decision making, there was a lot of conversation and uh, the Dave Oliva crew chose to come under here, under the wires and under the, uh, the railroad tracks because of the currents in a, in a pretty daring decision to get through there and uh, there was a lot of discussion about it and he decided to go through. Chris, what do you think about this decision? That was, uh, yeah, it was definitely a decision to be made on their crew's part, a lot of guidance from people on the sidelines, a lot of construction going on here, cables hanging and whatnot. But the advantage is hanging tight to the shore and not having the, ch uh, the current right on their heads. Looks like it's going to pay off. The first boat here that uh, patrols the course, sees if it's navigable and passable, has made it. Uh, the only problem is the American flag that is.
ease if it's navigable and passable, has made it. Uh, the only problem is the American flag that is on uh, Dave Oliva's crew boat got in the way a little bit. And Looks like they got it down. There's Dave. He's doing yeah. good. He's looking a little questionable. They had to take it down. They did have yeah. to take it down, and they're so slowing up. Able's to get under. And uh, a little trouble, but it looks like they're getting through there okay. Yeah, it looks like they're moving out all right. A little questionable on the cruise part, but uh, they're getting through. I don't know if they're saving any time here because they did have to slow down. Yeah, unfortunately, that's uh, true. Um, looks like they only have one oarsman going. Looks like they should have just taken the flag down and laid it across. But we can't say for sure. Either way, they've done it. And now I'm sure the rest of the crews are going to do it too. They're going to follow them through. The bowman's going back to his seat, Joe Haney. And they're still well in the lead. Back in the distance, even before the expressway bridge, I could see uh, the second place boat. He's still a good ways of water behind. It's very difficult to tell. That may be Richard Schmidt. Um, yeah, we now I can tell the boats, the Van Dyne boat, that means it is the Azimuth team. Schmidt is closing on Azimuth, was the latest word we did get, though. Less than a minute between those two, and Schmidt was closing fast. In fact, I can see both boats. I see Azimuth's boat and Schmidt's support I think boat. Schmidt's ahead. Yeah, I can see it just barely picked that out at this point. It looks like they're in a dead time. Maybe Schmidt might have edged. That Brigantine crew boat's going to go back and support these other two boats through this little tricky area. The decision proved to be a right one for Oliva and his crew, like they had made all day long. He just continued to build on the commanding lead he established throughout the back base. But after eight hours, his toughest challenge was right around the corner. Challenge was right around the corner. There's Marina. You can see some of the people out here. They're on the boats out here. Taking a quick break right now. Dave needed a well-deserved drink right here. He opened his stretch up between he and Asmuth and uh, Schmidt by even more water if it's possible at this late in the game. He's just having a fantastic finish. Yeah, these bo the other people aren't even in sight at this point, and uh, he doesn't have that far to go. He keeps asking, though. He is just exhausted. Yeah, he is, his fuel tank has run dry. He is on empty, but he's still uh, he's still increasing his stroke rate, or at least holding it. He's incredible finish. I got I can't wait to see him get out of the water and try to walk on this dock. He's got to be completely out of gas. He sure is and uh, this is just amazing that uh, what a finish. I mean it looked like at one point when they hit that wall current that he, he may die but uh, since then he has been strong, steady and consistent. He can as we smell can. the finish line at this point and he's coming home for free. He's definitely running on just uh, his spirit, his personality. They're pulling him through. He's getting some last minute instructions from the captain, Captain Argus there. But he's looking good. A little support. He's home free. Yeah, the boat here has been very, very helpful with the currents. Uh, Les Argus of Argus Real Estate on the sea arrest, and they have been tremendous with these uh, with the currents along with Mike Toy. They've had a lot of help here. This hasn't been a, a, a two-man show. This was quite a team effort to uh, put this win together, or, or so-called win as we speak right now. Yeah, he's helped uh, not only uh, Dave here, but quite a few of the other uh, crews who were able with the, with the power boat to go back and forth. But quite a few of the other uh, crews who were able with the with the power boat to go back and forth. Get a lot of support here as the finish line comes up. But he's really been a help to all the swimmers, not just Dave. It's Dave has really got done the job by himself. Absolutely. It takes quite an individual to swim this far and this long at this rate. And uh, just an amazing feat. And you can see that uh, he's picking his head up. You can hear him, even even his voice. You see how tired he is. He has trouble getting the words out. And At this point, it seems as if his mind has stopped doing the thinking and his crew has to do the thinking for him. Right now, the current is really, really strong. Uh, we're looking at it. The boat can't even hold its water. It, it is almost swimming like up a waterfall, it looks at this point. Very difficult time in the race. It sure is. He's almost at a standstill right now. And you can see the difference. What a difference with the crew. Uh, See how hard they have to pull just to move yeah, the boat. Just, just the last minute here as we uh, angled into the channel, the current is picked up tremendously. This and you can see the sign right there. It says right there, caution strong current. Well, this is That's right amazing. Here. Look at this. They're going to have to angle in for sure as far as they can get. This current right at this point in the last 20 yards has picked up tenfold. 
very, very strong right now at a critical moment in the race. Look at that. Oh. And it's just, uh, he just, he's having so much trouble making it. It's like swimming upstream. Oh. Oh. Ah. Unbelievable current. I just can't even, it's pushing him into the dock. Oh, he might even fall into the dock. It's really something else here, what we're witnessing at this moment. Critical race, and it's going to be just as difficult for the following swimmers who are all just like Dave, on, en on empty. At this point in the race, they just can't have any energy left. That was amazing that he got by that at this point in the race is just incredible. Yeah, the, the, this current at this point has got to be running at about 10 to 12 knots. And uh, at this late in the race with only a half a mile to go, that was almost what we saw there was almost a disaster. It sure was. He stopped for one second, it blew him back, and then uh, the, it, he just got himself together and did it. That was amazing. That could have been the break. He was going to be swept under that dock. How are you? Well, I, I can see, I can see that point right in that race being a point where some of the lesser swimmers, maybe that's their quitting point right there. They just can't make it past there. Yeah, well, we're going to, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back right after uh, we get out here and, and we make the turn and under this bridge. So we'll be back with another report and we're going to be following Dave Oliva to the finish now. On the home stretch. On the home stretch. <laughs> and that was... I see Latin lunch. If it's going to happen for you, it's because you make it happen. Radio check, one, two, three, triple six, seven miles northeast with the cardiac. The answer could be an Air Force ROTC scholarship. You'll get an education and the training to become an Air Force officer. With an Air Force ROTC scholarship, you can go as far as your talent and drive take you. far as your talent and drive take you. Aim high, Air Force. Unbelievable current, Chris, right here. As you can see, going through the bridge, and he's just powering through it right now. He doesn't seem to be uh, having the same trouble. He's expecting it now. It's not like that brick wall. Did you, did you? I know it's an overused word, but the only thing we can use to describe it, dramatic. This current is intense. How he's getting through it at this point, I don't know. He's got a huge heart. He's got a hug. You know, every inch of shoreline you get his hand on, even up against that shoreline, that current's running 8 to 10 knots. Out in the channel, it's 12 to 15. The wind is also against him. He, this is a critical point in the race, but it looks like he's powering through. Yeah, I just can't believe this. I, I, I'm really interested to see how, uh, how some of the other racers, uh, we're not going to have a chance, but some of the other racers, how they get through here. And this is probably going to be as far as uh, the racers. They're going to talk about this section of the race at this time and this current. It's just like unbelievable. This uh, whole development is in the last half to three quarters of a mile for these swimmers, right when they're at their lowest point. And to be faced with those conditions that late in the game, it could make or break for quite a few of the swimmers. Hopefully this will uh, settle down a little bit when the rest of the field comes. Dave's the first guy to encounter this. I'm sure word will get back to the rest of the field, but it is very, very strong. As you can see, the chief patrol judge right there, I'm sure he's relaying that message back to the other people so we don't have any kind of accident go on either. Well, we're at the finish, and you, as you can see, Dave Oliva not only working on winning this, he's working on another bonus, the sprint prize from the Bringing Team Bridge Inn. And they're screaming at him right now. They want him to pick it up, rightly so. Bridge Inn. And they're screaming at him right now. They want him to pick it up, rightly so. There's a couple bucks in this from Bringing Team Bridge right to the finish line. With the way he swum here, it's very possible he can get that too. He's got practically every other bonus today. That's amazing. How, uh, you know, even to, to even think about that after this race, God, it's the guy, just a tremendous finish. And, and the other people are, aren't even in sight. He could even lengthen his lead from the bridge after that unbelievable current. Yeah, sprinting into that current. I'm sure the last thing on his mind was the money. I'm sure it was just making it. But now he's here. He can smell the finish line. He's only uh, several hundred yards away. We're coming into the. Oh, the princess is not there. It'll be a little shorter. Uh, there it is. Second and third. 
Oh, that's another one. Over by that big one and in, just like we came in. Fantastic finish. We're gonna take him, we're gonna take him in right now, all the way to the finish, as you can see. Keep it up, Joe, straight in. Yeah, everybody cheering him on. He's, He's gonna reach the fans, and yeah, it's, from here on in, the adrenaline's hitting you, as you can see. He's so close to the finish line. We're gonna have a big crowd on the dock waiting. Uh, in fact, I think they might even play his favorite song as he rolls in here. But uh, first time victory, Dave Oliva, with the princess backing him up. You can, you can see all the boats surrounding him, and he, I'm sure adrenaline is just going to carry him. Food or no food, running on empty. Oh, when you get okay. to this point in the race, it's just pure adrenaline, the high of knowing that you did it and you won the most prestigious long uh, marathon swimming race in the world. At this point, he's got to be on top of the world. He has, he has beaten everybody in an outrageous international, very, very competitive field. He's topped them all. Young guy, incredible, coming in. He's topped them all. Young guy, incredible, coming in just to the finish line here. He still has two little boat uh, dock slips to go. Hope they bring him down the right one. It would be a shame at this point in the game, but I think his crew think, has the idea together. I think even if he missed it at this point, he would still win. He's that far ahead. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. There we are. A couple boat salutes. As we bring it in. All the yachts set out there to greet him. And you can hear the horns going off as Dave Oliva will be crowned the 1989 World Champion of Marathon Swimming. An incredible feat just to finish this race, let alone win it in such a commanding fashion. What would have been a nice thing to do today was to count the amount of strokes he's taken today. I know it would have been almost some uh, unaccountable thing to do, but well over a million strokes. This guy has just been nonstop. I bet even now he's in the mid-70s, his stroke. 70 strokes per moment. Well, he's averaged probably about 78, 79 strokes a minute for seven and a half hours, or, or a little even more than that. I mean, yeah, it's now 4:51. They left uh, at nine. We left a little before nine. It's just been a full day. Eight hours. That's eight hours. Yeah, you gotta go around. Incredible, just incredible. And the marina is really alive here. Everybody's out. I can see the finish here. It's packed with people. Packed with people, exactly oh, right. It's gonna be a fantastic finish. He's and gonna come up around this last dock here and swim a little right turn, then another right, and then the last hundred yards home. So you can hear the boat. Home. So you can hear the boats and everybody saluting them, and uh, the Trump Princess is nowhere to be found, but that other tremendous boat, the Mystique, there it is, there it is. Trump Princess, maybe coming in for the finish of the race here. I oh, wonder yeah. if oh, Mr. Trump, Trump is on that boat. <laughs> was, he, was his timing an accident, or was he here to see the finish? I, I think so. He, there was supposedly a special surprise that Donald Trump had uh, for the finish, and, and we have yet to see that. Although our man on the spot, John Forkin, is there. He's at the finish, ready to take over as soon as we bring him in. And as All you can right, see... Dave, as he's heading into that last stretch for home here. And we're going to head to the finish. Right now, as you can see Dave in the finish, and we're going to go over to John Forkin right now as we're going to hustle over and try and see him and close this thing out. Excellent event. A world-class event right here in your own backyard. Beautiful downtown Atlantic City. As he picks up his stroke rate. Okay, Jim Schaefer has just gotten off the boat. Jimmy and our camera crew are with us. Jim, what do you think of this? Well, it's been a tremendous, if you would have saw the, the rip tide that he had to face at Harris Marina, it was just an incredible sight, something that will stick with me for a long, long time. Chris, what were your yeah, feelings on it? It was almost rip? life and death for about 10 yards, and up against a 15 knot current, it was incredible. But look at him now, he is pumping. He's coming in on sheer willpower. Amazing, he's picking up that stroke rate. The crowd's going crazy. The Trump princess in the background. Just a premier. The Trump princess in the background. 
just a premier event, perhaps the best pro event in New Jersey. Excellent. Premier outstanding day of ocean racing. Here it is in his last 10 yards. We have a line in the water. Let's get that camera on it. Yeah, we got a uh, history here. It sure is a tremendous moment. Dave Oliva unseating former champion Paul Asmith with a tremendous effort. And there it is. The 1989 world champion of marathon swimming. Tremendous event, John. Ten points for Dino. Indeed, a tremendous event. Awesome, awesome. Well, it looks like now the uh, race could be between uh, second and third. Paul Osmith and, uh, is, is, Schmidt. and, and Schmidt, his yeah. friend from California. Friday, Osmith had him, uh, say, about 100 yards, but anything could happen in that current. Uh, this finish right here, though, is just incredible. Oliva, hands raised in the air. Ecstatic as ever, probably one of the greatest moments of his life. I can imagine so. John, uh, at last uh, look, Asmuth looked to have the lead. The, the, the really tight race was neck and neck, was uh, Claudio Pitt and Diego Delgano for fourth and fifth place. That was really the tightest race. Schmidt challenged for a while, but Asmuth broke away. So I think that uh, I'd be very surprised if Schmidt could catch him at this point. Super. Just a super race. And uh, the second and third place finishers are about four to five minutes behind the lead. So they will be coming in momentarily. Right now, it's just all David Levia here reaping the glory of his hard work today. Didn't want to quit. <laughs> I didn't want to quit. I never. I get in the water before these races and you got to tell yourself I'm not quitting. Um, you might think about giving up and letting somebody pass you, but never going to be beat some classy competition. How do you feel about that? Excuse me? You had some classy competition whom you beat. Yes. Uh, well, Paul just finished Lake St. John, so he's a little tired, I would assume. And. Uh, I expect a little more of um, Diego and, and Rob Schmidt, who uh, always beat me, and uh, I'm, I just, uh, I don't know what place they're in, but he should be coming, and uh, I just forgot about pain, put my head down, and just started counting my strokes, one, two, three, like you're going to go to sleep or something, and pretty soon I was out of it. What is your feeling now when you get the race? When you win that is. It's a great feeling. Hey, good job. Uh, first first race I've won. Thank you. How many strokes a minute were you doing? Marathon race, I'm sorry. How many strokes a minute you think you were doing? Any idea? 16? 80 strokes a minute. Is that right? 78 to 82 strokes per minute, which is uh, about average for me. Um, but towards the end, I usually got out on about 65, so I was amazed I could hold on that hold that high paced stroke towards the end. Where are you going from here? Any future plans, another race? Uh, in Argentina, they have one in December. And I just was informed that the Cancun race is canceled. So I still have another six months before my next race. The ship or army? I still have another six months before my next race. The, the ship or army? How about your crew? How were they? How important were they? To they were great. I met them two days ago, and uh, they were just so supportive. Uh, jokes, which I like during the race, and uh, just Gentlemen, everything.